Let's bring in Hustler. We got a lot of things to get to. Hus from Winnipeg Sports Talk. Good to see you, buddy. So many great things. And as you said, we're only we're only on the air in USA today, not in Canada on Game Plus. Preempted for pickleball. So I said, let's do an NFL thing with you. Your Chiefs. There's no signs of the Super Bowl champions slowing down. Am I right? I uh, I would agree. I mean, I uh, I mean, listen, it hasn't been a great off season. There's been a few. I mean, the Rashi Rice business uh, down in Dallas with the uh, the I mean, the mm-hmm. street racing and that accident is bad. I mean, like if you look back at last year's season, they were most challenged at the receiving position. I mean, Mahomes. You know, his numbers weren't the same. Well, the guys weren't catching the balls. I mean, that was the biggest topic throughout the first half of the year, or really most of the season, to be honest. And then Rice's development into a true number one in his rookie season was one of the biggest reasons why they were able to kind of solidify themselves, and we all know what he did in the playoffs. If he's out for any significant period of time, that will be a big loss. They do get Hollywood Brown in, which was, uh, you know, he's playing for a new contract, realizing that he's could not be in a better situation to earn that. Um, and then, of course, their first-round pick, Xavier Worthy, the burner out of Texas, just signed his deal, and there's high hopes for him. R- R- Rice, to me, is huge. But, yeah, I mean, listen, this is a team. Once you get to where the Chiefs are, players want to come and play for you. Um, and... Until 15 isn't behind center, um, they will be oh. the team to beat. I, 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 the, the division's always interesting, and this is the time of year every year where people start and hot takes are coming out in the, in the, in the, in the shows down south that watch out for the Chargers. This is their year. And, and I will say this. As an organization, the Chargers are in a better spot right now moving forward with Jim Harbaugh. He's a guy that has proven results everywhere that he's been. But this isn't going to happen overnight. I mean, this is, they blew up their roster. I mean, Keenan Allen's gone. Mike Williams is gone. They've got Justin Herbert. Who's he throwing to? How long will it take for Harbaugh to establish that new level um, of physicality that we saw at Michigan, that we saw in San Francisco before? So, I mean, I think the Chiefs are still the beasts of the West, the team to beat in the AFC. And it's funny, I mean, I give our girl Taylor Swift credit. She got a ring her first year in the league. She might be getting two rings this year, Rod. If you've seen the offseason, I wouldn't be surprised if the Chiefs can do a three-peat. And then uh, she might get one from Travis as well. So, uh, listen, the Chiefs are, uh, it, it, for a guy that's been you know, cheering for them for over 25 years, you appreciate it that much more because you remember where the team was in the pre Mahomes era. But um, as long as he's there and Andy Reid's there, this team is going to be uh, the team to beat. And while there's questions about a lot of other guys, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, I mean, some of the top quarterbacks in the league playoff time, everyone knows what they're getting from Pat Mahomes once uh, you get to January. John in Edmonton says, Huss, why do you think the NFL worked around Taylor Swift's tour schedule to accommodate the Kansas City Chiefs? Is that a thing? Uh, Did that happen? Well, no, that's not a thing. I mean, that that's <laughs> the, the era's tour has been going for like two and a half years. <laughs> so I, that's what I, I think thought. John, I, I think John may be, he might be uh, reading too many posts on social media from angry, uh, angry Raider fans or something like that. I'm not too sure. Jeff in Calgary, the Stams fan, says, if it wasn't for Tom Brady, we would be talking about Mahomes being the GOAT. Well, you, are, you know this better than I. You look at the, 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 we are. You look at the trajectory of his career, the trajectory. He's ahead of where Brady was at his age, right? Oh, oh yeah. And, 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 and listen, like, as someone that's always been a Mahomes guy and, you know, took great, pleasure and fun at being on the other side of the Brady debates for a long time. Full disclosure, the guy has six Super Bowl rings. He will be seven, considered the seven, goal. seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, seven, seven. I was thinking the six with the New England. Yeah. And then of course the town yeah. one, which is the one that really hurts because that was the one that was against Kansas city. Uh, and that was the head to head matchup. And that will always be the rubber match. Now, when you look at where those two teams were, um, going into that game and the fact that the Chiefs had no offensive line and Mahomes ran more than any quarterback in the history of the game, 
Uh, I still think he got done a little dirty by his team. But, um, listen, Brady is the standard. And Brady's not just the standard, in my opinion, in the National Football League. He is the standard. I mean, in basketball, there are some guys that have 10 and 11 championships. I believe Bill Russell. But, I mean, the game was so different. You're talking about a 32-team league in a cap era. Like, what Tom Brady's done is just so incredible. But, yes, to the point, what Mahomes has done in the first half of his career is is truly unbelievable. And as long as he's there and as long as Andy Reid's there, they do have an advantage when it comes to this salary cap system because there are guys, veteran players, Hollywood Brown's a perfect example, that will want to come and maybe play for a little less to have a legitimate chance for a ring. So, listen, if they can do the three-peat, something that Brady never did, that conversation picks up even more. Um, but again, it's two different eras. Brady did benefit from one of the greatest coaches of all time, a few difference. Like, I mean, Mahomes has had to do it more himself, I'll argue. But at the end of the day, it's about winning. And uh, Tom Brady's still the guy that Pat's chasing. But uh, I'll tell you what, if in a, in a, in a theoretical world where, you know, you're betting everything you have on one game, and you get to choose who your quarterback is with everything on the line. I'll take Mahomes, um, but again, Brady is the uh, Brady is the standard right now. Um, but I'll tell you what, Pat's not too far off, and uh, I don't think there's anyone else that's really in the conversation even at this point right now in his young career. We only got about two minutes left for a break here, but Hus, I've now covered two Super Bowls and taken our show there. You've been to many over the years covering your... Isn't it great? And by the way, isn't the NFL wonderful? Everything for me, I'm sure it was the same for you. Everything you ask, yes, 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 yes. Hosting events there last year in Las Vegas. Dude, they are a machine. Now, why every league isn't following what they're doing, I don't know why. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Rod. Uh, it is, listen, the NFL is the standard for everything. It's the standard for sports leagues. It's the standard for business. Uh, although they might be taking a bit of a haircut with this NFL Sunday ticket class action suit that they may have to be paying like $5 billion back to people. Um, but listen, I mean, it is the biggest show on earth, and the Super Bowl is the biggest event. Um, the privilege of getting to do Radio Row, as you've done before, is unlike anything else in this business. And, uh, and I can tell you, we are already working on it. It has sucked, you know, with everything that's happened here and in the business to not be there the last couple of years. Uh, I was at the New Orleans Super Bowl the last time. That was the blackout game between the Niners and the Ravens. We'll never forget it. But I also will never forget Super Bowl week in New Orleans. So work is underway to be uh, hopefully seeing you and the rest of the crew down there in Louisiana for the big game in uh, coming up in February this year. And if things go my way, not only will we be there, but my Chiefs will be there looking for three in a row. Ah, let's not put the cart ahead of the horse. But I was talking to a buddy of mine from Vegas the other day, and I said, hey, what did you think of Radio Row? Because, again, I tried to get him in, and he was my tech guy, Huss. He was my tech guy. And they, yeah. they gave him a pass. <laughs> and I said to him the other day, what did you think about Radio Row? He was like, oh, Flava Fave, Michael Irvin, obviously, McAfee. Like, all of it. You're right there with everybody. It's just, they, it's inclusive. It's inclusive. That's why I think inclusivity works. Buddy, you and I could go on forever. I should let you go. But have a great show today, man. And have a good summer. Chat with you soon. Right back at you, Rod. All the best to you and your listeners. Andrew Hustler-Patterson from Winnipeg Sports Talk.